Hey guys, thanks for joining. Today we're going to be making a beat. And if you've ever painted before, you know that there's a lot of fluidity to painting. There's a lot of freestyle and blending involved and a lot of room for mistakes. And that's kind of how I view producing music. My hope is that these concepts will help you break through any creative barriers that you might have. So let's just jump right in. Now, if you've never used a digital audio workstation like FL Studio before, that's totally fine. Feel free to sit back and relax. You don't need to follow along. It's not a step-by-step -step tutorial. It's more conceptual. So I'm just going to add a new instrument here. And I'm going to Omnisphere, which is something I'm comfortable with, something I use often. And I'm just going to grab a random sound. So here's a chord. I'm hitting an F minor chord. Three notes. I don't know what I'm looking for. I'm just waiting for something to jump out of me. That's kind of cool. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so that's the F minor chord. So let's think of a little loop. Yes, okay. It's been done before. That's totally fine. So I'm going to jump into piano roll. I'm going to tap out my tempo. So. so here we go. Notes and automation. Tempo on. There we go. There's a little loop. So Alt-Q is going to quantize. And that looks good. Okay. Jump to the playlist. Go to song mode. There's the loop. Jump right back into Omnisphere. Let's get a second sound. And it's often helpful to play the loop when you're looking for a sound so you can see if they blend well. Yeah, I like that. Why not? So what is the second preset I found there? So we'll go to pattern two. Make sure we're on this on the playlist. Here's um, record, but I don't want to record um, right at the input. I want to press the space bar. So here we go. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Alt Q, quantize. So it's got kind of a lot of delay. So in Omnisphere, I think it's this chorus echo. So let's hear it without it. So it needs a little bit of it. So I'm just going to turn that mix down. Let's switch it up. Sample Tank. It's another VST that I like to use. Oh, I like that. Yeah, okay. There we go. kind of messed up but that's fine all we want to do is bring that down and then we are going to alt q that and that looks good highlight all bring it down another octave play it fix some of the velocity and what you could do is you can go through and kind of just Give it a little bit of a bounce by turning every other one down. So it doesn't sound so robotic. And um, as I'm going, I'll mix. Um, I'll throw like an equalizer on there and then give it like a high pass, like a steel. Leave room for the kick. And you know, when you're making a beat, you can go back and delete sounds that weren't layers that weren't good um, but we're just gonna keep moving we're gonna find another sound oh, I like that 
You also don't want to clutter your beat up too much. Um, so I don't want to have another roll right now that's pro that's like really full. Um, so let's see. I like that. It's simple. This isn't a beat that, you know, you sit and tire over for a while. It's just a fluid beat. Record. Don't want to do wait on, uh, wait for input. Just want to press the space bar. So very simple. Boom. That one was obviously too loud. Can't even find it. There it is. Alt Q. That one went too long. Boom. Boom. There we go. I want to accentuate my um, chords a little bit. So I want to find... Now I'm looking for something specific. I know that Omnisphere has these lush strings let's see acoustic strings this is kind of the painting process where you're like oh i know exactly what tool i want to use kind of like that so layer five show you what notes i'm playing here Q, quantize. Quantize is your friend. Does it need to go higher? Now I'll admit this isn't a trap beat. <laughs> it's not a West Coast banger. It's just kind of what's coming out. So make sure I'm constantly saving. Control S or file save. And let's go to six. So now that I have this loop, it's kind of five layers of instruments. Who knows what's going to stay in the final mix of it, but. I could start giving it some percussion. So I'm going to open back up my browser. I like that one. Make sure loop points are use loop points is off, because um, sometimes that can cause uh, a looping effect. So that was a simple one to find, a simple symbol. I like that. And then I like to just switch it up. Like I don't like to make the whole beat in one kit. I'll just go to another one. Let's see. Hat. I'll just give myself a simple four steps and if you click over here and then you right click and do four steps it'll fill in. The way I like to do uh, my drums is I usually start with um, the lighter percussions, the cymbals, the hats, the shakers, uh, the perks. So and then I'll move on to the snares and the claps um, but it doesn't need to be uh, so rule-based, um, it can just be fluid. Whatever sounds good. I don't even know. I'm clicking random. Look at this. Boom. And also, I don't try... I used to maybe do this more, but I don't try as much anymore to find the perfect snare. Sometimes there's pleasant surprises in snares that don't sound like 100% like you want when you first put it into the beat but then later on it's fine and it's different um, because a lot of times your beats start to sound exactly the same because you always just kind of go back to that same sound but if you try to branch out and do something new every time you make a beat 
you're going to be growing. You're going to be making unique music. You're going to be expressing yourself in new ways. So. So I kind of like that little, little hop right there. Oh, I like that. As you can tell, I'm using different hats. Um, I think that when you mix the hats, it sounds a lot better than um, just doing the same hat over and over again. But sometimes that same hat kind of sound um, is what you're going for. So it just varies. I chose this because it's going to be kind of the foundation of my snare hit. Uh, it's not going to be my main snare, but it kind of starts to give me that feel. You'll be the life of the party. <laughs> Now, one trick that I like to use is I, I do like to stay pretty um, uniform with my patterns, um, but then what makes it unique is then you you kind of switch it up at the end. So I'm not, I don't even know what that's going to sound like, but if I go over here, so that was like a happy accident that it actually works. And you could, you could try it and then you can adjust it. So there's like my basic percussion hat loop. So now I'm going to be looking for more of a snare or a clap. So I don't know. East Coast. Okay. Snare. I like how this one sounds with that sound right there so i'm just gonna go here oh and by the way like i had said you can sometimes you have something looping and you don't even know it and it only shows up when it gets really really loud because it just keeps looping and looping and looping um and you're like why is this hat so loud <laughs> so here's here's my snare There we go. Kept the end. Went with that same theme of keeping the end um, unique. And see how fast we're moving? I mean, if you psych yourself out and try to find all the perfect stuff, you are going to be here forever. You want to get a kick that punches through your mix. So it's good to look for the kicks when you're playing the beat. I like that. You pretty much know you're going to want to kick there and there. You can always decide if you want to have kicks there. But sometimes you can do an up kick or an up beat. Something like that. And then I'm just gonna repeat that loop and then add a little bit of an end. So if we jump here, yeah, that's great. So I'll admit that this is not the best beat, but this is just to give you a idea of how fluid beat making could be. So the one thing that I think we are missing uh, thus far is the bass line. I'm just going to type in bass.
I like that. So I'm actually going to mute my drums just so I can kind of hear it with the other sounds um, more. You may already know this, but if you go into your root notes, there's where my chords start. And you can actually tell where your chords start if you go to the pattern of the chords, and we could even use the string ones. Um, you paste it in there on the same pattern, and you look, there's your ghost notes. Here's your root note. So, So yeah, the trick is, is that I'm hitting that root note of the chords. You're using that as your structure, as your skeleton here. Then you're going in and switching things up. Yeah, I like that a little better. And if you put a note into the same area, like overlapping pitch bend. And that only works with, you know, certain synths that support it. Uh, so what we'll want to do eventually is map it out and you just do that by adding and taking away things and there's other techniques this is very very basic and you know a lot of times you can cut out the sounds that you started with and the rest of the beat sounds better without it so here's like the bells cut out kind of takes away some of that Christmassy bell sound the strings hold the chords And then you just throw the bells in for fun. So there we go. If you took anything away from this video, I hope that it's that you can create freely without being held back by fear of failing or the standard of perfection. Every beat's not going to be great, but you're never going to make a beat if you just never get in and do it. So if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe. If you have any questions uh, or comments, please throw them in the comment section and we'll catch you in the next video. Peace.